Welcome to Cinnamon Ridge Farms of Donahue, Iowa. I'm John Maxwell. And I'm Joan Maxwell, and we hope you enjoy the tour of our dairy and farm. Um, we moved to Scott County, Iowa in the middle 1800s. In fact, we have a uh, ancestor, my great-great-grandfather, that was a physician in the Civil War. Um, he also had uh, dairy cattle. We have Jersey dairy cattle, and Jerseys have run in our blood through all the years. When I was a boy, we milked 30 cows. We have uh, slowly uh, grown uh, to our current state of 250 cows. We milked uh, by hand all the way back into the uh, 1930s, and then in the early 1970s, we got a pipeline. We milked in stanchions in a pipeline, and then stalls in a pipeline, and then free stalls, and here we are today uh, with milking with robots. Um, robots has worked out very well for us. Uh, they allow us to manage the dairy differently, uh, be more production, uh, by milking more times a day and managing them better to get that production. The transition was actually quite easy. The Jerseys learned the system very quickly and they were going through five days later pretty much on their own. We had a cow Callie was her name, that was uh, so excited for it that in uh, a 24 hour period she went through 185 times. Now she was milked five of those times. She went through over and over again until the point where I think the next day she probably only went through 10 times because she was laid out and she was so tired that laying in sand seemed like a more appealing thing than going through the robot 185 times. My daughter Amy, who uh, is the manager of the dairy facility uh, and takes care of all the day-to-day -day activities. This is kind of the headquarters of Amy's office. This would be uh, a camera. There are several cameras showing different things. Uh, one, there's a camera on each one of the uh, robots or the A4s. I would recommend that at the bare minimum. Uh, that way you can see what's going on when you're in other parts of the farm, other parts of the world even. And much of this Amy can do from her phone. One of the things that has come that we didn't expect is the cows. First of all, our cows were very tame to begin with, but they've become even tamer because you never chase them. They're always it's almost like, huddle up, we're gonna call the next play for football, kind of a thing. They come over, they're, they're really curious, and it has made for a very calm, docile, high production herd because of, we don't chase them to be milked, we don't chase them to be going back to their stalls. It has made the herd a lot calmer. We feel that cow comfort has to be the, the utmost of our attention. Part of the cow comfort uh, situation is uh, that they lay on sand. Uh, sand is wonderful in the cow scene. It is a very hard thing in the manure scene, as every dairyman knows. Um, also, they have uh, the brushes, the lunar brushes, uh, as part of the cow comfort. And uh, they are also uh, in a freestall barn which I think anybody that has a robot knows that the cows get quite a bit tamer to the point of they're like a dog that's right next to you all the time. We have alley scrapers that scrape them down. It scrapes it to either a barn cleaner that scrapes it across and all of it ends up in this pit right here which is uh, the, what would be described as the chimney system. The chimney system is where the manure goes out and it exits down through the bottom so especially in the winter time you don't have 
one frozen block of manure. It keeps, keeps being fed underneath, so your manure pit only has the frozen crust on top and all of the uh, unfrozen manure is on the bottom. We have a dredge system that dredges it up underneath and gets it churning so uh, all of it can become a liquid. Most of the manure is hauled on our corn silage acres in the late August time frame. My name is Kara Maxwell. I am a, going to be a sophomore at Iowa State. It's, it's my favorite, I, I think it's my favorite thing that I do with the cows, well besides working with them, but I really enjoy naming them. Okay, so like soccer is in the um, sports family, um, canary is in the birds family, she has relatives such as like chickadee or parakeet. There's a lot of things to do on this farm beyond just taking care of the cows. and. Um, my, my dad's a little bit of a, a dreamer, he has a lot of ideas, so I want to um, perhaps be involved in the, the tour, the tourism side of the farm, or um, perhaps execute one of his other ideas that he has that hasn't happened yet, but it can. The purpose of this room is to show off the robots so the tours, foreign kids, adults from domestic, uh, is so they can come and see the robots in operation through the windows on the sides and they can see the robots working and they go home and they don't have that barn smell on their clothes, they don't have manure on their shoes um, and so it kind of creates a separation and for us it's important that the cows can do their normal thing day after day and they're not interrupted by people constantly being around and taking them out of their routine because we all know cows with a routine milk and perform the best. So we even have it where we can dim the lights and have it so the anti-glare or anti-see-through uh, glass can perform. It's dark in here where we don't even know or the cows don't even know that we're in here looking at them and it shows off what the astronauts can do. This room here is turned out to be a huge asset to Cinnamon Ridge and the tours. Up in the upper floor of this facility, we have the ability to do a lot of receptions and parties and things like that. We have a restaurant's license so we can uh, serve food out of here if we want to. It also provides a view of the cattle like you don't normally see. You get to see cattle flow, how they interact, and in some regards, it's helping us learn what we should do better. But it also works for people to come see and see how the barn works and how it's laid out and when you get a bird's eye view of it all it becomes very interesting and many people have described it as like watching people at the mall. Uh, the Junos run every hour, you can program them however you want and they push up the feed as the cows push it out the Juno pushes it up. And you can see in the middle of the night when that Juno pushes up, they say, oh, why golly, Amy or John or somebody's feeding us. That's a cool deal. Middle of the night. So they get up out of their stalls and they come over and they eat the feed that has been pushed up. At the same time, it spurs activity that the next thing they do is go over and be milked in the um, astronauts A4s uh, in the middle of the night when you want to keep the box time full. So it, it kind of works hand in hand with each other and it is a very successful system. We're now managing the cows differently because we don't have to worry about having a person push up the feed. We don't have to worry about uh, whether the person is here to work at 6 a.m. to milk cows or things like that. So it has made us a better efficient dairy. 
Our goal is to be number one in the nation for jerseys and milk production. We feel that robots, Junos, uh, Luna brushes, all those things play a part in our success of uh, becoming number one. This is my brother's baby. Uh, he's an anesthesiologist and he treats this like an operating room. My brother Edwin uh, has been part of the operation since we grew up together. Um, I don't think he dreamed all of his life of making cheese, but when the idea was proposed to him, he uh, seemed very receptive to it. Um, we have our own store, which helps. Um, what we sell, we sell uh, beef and pork that come off our farm. Also, uh, eggs. Uh, we have chickens in the egg production that comes off our farm. Um, we do baked goods, which we fix uh, in our restaurant and then take uh, the breads and the sweet rolls and the cookies and uh, all sorts of yummy uh, baked goods for the store. It's a little bit of a unique store in that it's done on the honor system. That is where you go in, you select your product, you put the money in the slot, and you have made your purchase and you're on your way. It has turned out to be a, uh, a very good thing. It's a way for us to promote our product and let the community enjoy our product um, all the way from bread to cheese to meat uh, to soap. So it's a great thing. Uh, we do several different kinds of tours. Um, one of them obviously is the dairy tour that we do and show where milk comes from. Um, and the, another tourism segment is we do foreign tours and show them how we farm here in the United States, uh, giving them uh, different points of uh, practices that we use and we bring them into our home and, and also uh, have a restaurant here in the home and feed them in the home. Um, I think the more people we educate, the more learned they become and it promotes our industry uh, in a very positive way. So I would encourage absolutely every one of uh, dairymen and farmers alike to whenever you can tell your story and tell the farmer's story it benefits us. Great to have you here. <laughs> you had to get the last word in. <laughs>